Have you ever been in a situation where you're in a high stakes production environment and everything is riding on your code working seamlessly? You've been slaving away on this project for weeks and you're ready to deploy, but then you run into a nightmare scenario. Your dependencies are incompatible and your code won't run. That's exactly what happened to me in my last job, where we relied solely on PIP for Python package management. The situation was a nightmare and it took me hours to get everything working correctly again. That's why I decided to dive deep into the world of Python environment tools. And let me tell you, it's a mess. That's a story for another time though. And in this video, I'm going to share with you some common alternatives to PIP, specifically PIPENV, Poetry, and Conda. You'll learn which tool is best suited for your needs and how to avoid the headaches that come with dependency hell. So buckle up and join me on this informative and practical journey to mastering Python environments. Before we actually get into the meat of this video, I want to give a shout out to another tool that might make your life easier if you're insistent on using PIP or if you can't switch tools for other reasons. PIP Tools is a Python package that comes with a really handy command pip compile. This will read your requirements from a packaging file like pyproject.toml or setup.config and compile a requirements.txt file from them with pinned versions. That way you only have to update your requirements in one place when developing packages which helps to eliminate the it works on my machine problem. pipenv is a python environment management tool that calls itself the python dev workflow for humans. It sits on top of pip, pyenv and virtualenv to help you manage your virtual environments across projects and keeps track of your current dependencies in a file called pip file. One nice benefit over just using pip and virtual env or venv is that it also produces a pip file.lock file, which contains hashes of all the packages you're using, which not only keeps your builds deterministic, but is also a first line of defense against supply chain attacks on PyPI. Also, if you have pyenv available, it can automatically install the required Python version for you when you clone a new project, which is really nice. To get started, install the pip env package. I recommend using pipx to keep your CLI tools in their own environments. Then, in your project directory, just run pip env install along with the package you want to install. In this case, I'm going to install Quiffen, which is one of my own packages. Pip env will then create a virtual environment for your project if you don't have one already, and then create both the pip file and pip file.lock. You can remove packages with pip env uninstall or update packages with pip env update. To run a command in the pip env environment, use pip env run. For example, to run my main.py file here, I can use pip env run python main.py, and it will run as if I was in the virtual environment. If if you want to run commands directly from the virtual environment, you can use pipenv shell to open a shell within the environment itself. You also have pipenv lock to install packages in the specified lock file and pipenv graph to display all your dependencies and their dependencies in a nice tree. Finally, you can run pipenv check to expose any security vulnerabilities in packages in your lock file or the current environment. Pipenv is great and super easy to set up, but it doesn't actually solve the problem of dependency management that I mentioned earlier. The next couple of tools do, though they solve it in slightly different ways. Before we move on though, if you're finding this video helpful, why not give it a thumbs up so as to appease the algorithm gods? And best subscribe too while you're at it. Of the tools we're discussing today, Poetry is the one I'm most familiar with by far. Poetry is both a dependency and environment manager, and a build system. I won't be going to the build system side of Poetry too much in this video, but let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a deep dive into Python packaging tools like Poetry, Atch, and Maturin. Getting started with Poetry is easy, but a little bit more effort than Pipen. First, install Poetry with pipx. Then, from outside your project directory, run Poetry New followed by your project name. This will scaffold out a basic project structure with some key files, particularly a pyproject.toml, which is used for specifying dependencies and other project metadata. If you have an existing project already that you'd like to add Poetry to, you can do that with Poetry init. To add a dependency to your project, run Poetry add. Like pipenv, if this will create a virtual environment for you, install a package there, and then create a lock file to record details about the package. However, the magic with Poetry is when you install more packages. Let's say I want to be able to export my Quiffen models to YAML. If I run Poetry add PyYAML, you'll see that it spends some time resolving dependencies and finding a compatible version of PyYAML to add to the project. This can really save your ass in a lot of situations, as Poetry is very thorough when checking compatibility between package versions. One downside to this is that it can sometimes take a long time to add a new package to your project. I've seen it take over three minutes on some larger projects. Projects. However, you only have to do this when adding dependencies to your project or refreshing your lock file. And once the lock file is in place, Poetry will use that for installing packages, which is great when you've just cloned someone else's Poetry project. Like pipenv, Poetry supports the run, update, lock, and shell commands. Poetry remove is used to remove dependencies, and you can view your project dependencies with Poetry show. If you want to share your package, Poetry build will create a wheel and a tarball for you. But dependencies that you don't want built into this wheel, like linters or testing packages, 
packages, you can use Poetry install dash g dev package name to install dependencies into the dev group, which is ignored by builds. Finally, let's discuss every data scientist's best friend and worst nightmare, Conda. Conda is a little different to pipenv in Poetry in that it doesn't use PyPI, the Python package index, to retrieve its packages. Instead, it uses external repositories like the Anaconda repository to install what are called recipes. Unlike pip and tools like pipenv or Poetry, which just use pip under the hood, Conda packages are not just limited to Python libraries. This is very useful for data scientists who often need Fortran, C or C++ binaries to go alongside their Python code. And for anyone who's gone through the absolute agony of setting up machine learning libraries on their computer using pip, you'll know what I mean. Conda is also an environment manager, though I personally don't find it as friendly as Poetry or pipenv, and it's very difficult to automate with scripts, as the Conda CLI is very particular about how it's set up in your terminal. And Conda is a little tricky to set up. The recommended way of installing Conda is via Anaconda, which is a whole data science platform, or through CondaForge, a community-run Conda repo. I have Conda installed via Miniconda, which is a bare-bones version of Anaconda that it only contains Conda itself. You could also install Conda via pip, but it might not be up to date and won't be installable on newer versions of Python. By default, Conda will create and activate a Python environment called base. To create a new Conda environment, run conda create dash dash name, followed by the environment name, any packages you want to install, and optionally a Python version. Conda will actually install Python for you, so you don't have to do that yourself. So I'll be really wild here and create a Python 3.7 environment. I can then activate the environment using Conda Conda activate filming, which puts me in a shell in that environment, and then search for packages using Conda search. Finally, I can install a package with Conda install. Conda doesn't actually create any project files for you, like pipenv or poetry. So if you want to share your project, you'll need to export your environment with Conda env export. This will output some YAML to standard out, which you can then write to a file, which is typically called environment.yaml. Future users can then do conda create dash f environment.yaml to create an environment from a file. Like poetry, Conda has a more advanced dependency resolver, so it can sometimes take some time to install packages. I personally don't really use Conda, but having worked as an engineer on a data team, I've seen the benefits that it provides to data scientists and data analysts firsthand. The Python packaging and environment management ecosystem is a bit of a mess, but hopefully this video will help you navigate the tools brawl and find the best tool for your project. Overall, I'd recommend using Poetry for most applications, as it works well for small and large projects, be it a package or a full blown microservice. If you're a data scientist, unless you fancy installing a Fortran compiler on your machine, I'd suggest sticking to Conda until something better comes along. If you want to get started with a poetry project, watch this video on iTemple, a CLI tool I built for templating all sorts of Python projects.